A woman with MCI once said to me, my MCI is not so M today. That's the thing about MCI, isn't it? It is so hard to live with. There are good days, but boy, there are bad days. What if you could have more good days and fewer bad days? My guest today has a very tangible way for people with MCI to do that, and that's what I want to talk about. So let's jump in. Hi, I'm Tony Deering of GoCogno.com, the website for people with mild cognitive impairment. This is the second of two videos that I'm doing with Dr. Nate Bergman, Chief Scientific Wellness Officer at Kemper Cognitive Wellness in Cleveland. He is one of the preeminent experts in the treatment of MCI and host of the Evolving Past Alzheimer's podcast. He was also kind enough to write the foreword to my new book on MCI, I Want My Mind Back, The Go Cogno Approach to Halt or Reverse Mild Cognitive Impairment, which just published and is available on Amazon. Dr. Bergman joined me recently to do a Facebook Live in a private group I belong to for people with MCI. And I've been sharing some outtakes from that. Last week, we talked about ketones and MCT oil. If you missed that episode, I'll share a link. Today, Dr. Bergman has a suggestion that I really found interesting. He thinks that you should monitor your blood sugar. It's something he does with his patients who have MCI, and when you hear the results they're getting with it and what it might do for you, I think you're going to want to consider it. So here's Dr. Bergman. When I first started, um, I was, for a time, when I was in medical school, I spent some time and did some uh, publications with Dr. James O'Keefe, who was kind of the preeminent cardiologist and cardiovascular um, guy in, in the Kansas City area where I'm from and, and did a lot of my training. And I remember sitting at lunch, so we were on a week-long uh, uh, stint in the hospital together and just doing cardiology things. And, and, um, and we sat down for lunch real fast and, and I had brought my lunch and I had uh, same thing. I had some fish and some vegetables and I had some, you know, a uh, few scoops of rice as well. And he's like, oh, he looks over my, my lunch. And I, you know, I was very proud of my healthy lunch. And, um, and he looks at lunch. He's like, hey, you should probably check your blood sugar. And I was like, that's crazy. Like, how bad can my blood sugar be? I mean, I exercising, I try, you know, like, how bad could it be? And um, anyways, he hooked me up with a, a glucose monitor. He gave me, he had somebody, one of the nurses give me a, a glu glucose monitor. He told me to check my blood sugar about an hour after eating. It's called postprandial glucose. Check your blood sugar 60, 30, 60, 90 minutes after you eat. Turns out postprandial or the blood sugar spike that happens after we eat can be even more damaging uh, to our brains than in our sort of our, our blood vessels and our brains and our hearts and even our eyes than what our fasting blood sugar is because a lot of us get fasting blood sugar blood, blood work done and we kind of can see our, our glucose but we don't know what our uh what the spike is uh, like the postprandial the after meal spike is and that's really important to know so when my blood sugar was spiking into the 140s 150s 160s after simple rice meals this wasn't like uh having a, a milkshake and, and and cake this was basically just from rice uh, we, we, I was just like, wow, that's, a, that's amazing. And it really kind of opened my mind to just the variability in all of us, uh, for blood sugar. So if somebody is having a, first of all, you have no idea what your blood sugar is unless you're checking it. You just don't, I've worn continuous blood glucose monitors and I mean, it's, it's amazing. So how, how much variability meal to meal time of day based on how much sleep I did, I had based on how much exercise I've gotten and, and what we've seen fairly consistently with people that are responding, that are willing to do and responding to the ketogenic diet is that when you, when you get the improved insulin signaling, which is a hormone that relates to blood sugar, and you stabilize blood sugars, um, oftentimes, but not always, oftentimes cognition will improve, 
right? And in, I remember hearing this and then verifying this in, in a few of my patients, we can see even day-to-day -day variability, Tony, like meaning people that have cognitive impairment on days where they're eating well, they're maybe taking MCT oil, they're exercising, they have better days. They're more cognitively intact. They're more sharp which is amazing. So, I mean, you can have it. It's, it's not like, you know, the whole thing is, oh, over time, you know, cognition and you degrades. But we see a lot of this, good days, bad days, good days, bad days, very much related to blood sugar and insulin. They're very much related. You know, you know it's, it's, it's kind of interesting tying in what you just said. And it, as you say, it wasn't one thing. It's, you know, they're doing other things. They're getting some exercise. They're doing some other things. And then in combination with this, just from what I've seen, one thing that people with MCI really struggle with is that up and down. And I think uh, w what you're talking about here uh, that gives people a chance to even out a little bit more or have more good days and fewer bad days, I think most people would welcome that. Anything about this topic I haven't touched upon, just generally ketones, ketosis that you, uh, uh, that you want to make sure people hear as we wrap up? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's really worth it to be knowing your blood sugar, you know, your, your sugars, what your glucose is when you're fasting and then after you eat about an hour. After you eat. And, and it's, it's, it's worth it to invest the hundred dollars or so to get something like a, Abbott Labs Precision Extra, something like that. You can get these at drugstores. You can get them on Amazon. Um, just go in to, if you are not comfortable buying something on Amazon uh, like this. You may um, just go into or call CVS or Walgreens or Walmart, you know, one of the pharmacies, and just say, "Hey, I need something to check my blood sugar. What's the cheapest unit that you have?" And you're going to need a couple things. You need like you know, something to, like an alcohol swab to clean your finger. And you get the Lancet needles. Of course, this isn't medical advice. You know, ask your doctor. But um, this is all you, you can do this all yourself. And um, you can uh, you just you know you just basically prick your finger if you've never done this. You just get a little finger prick. There's a little um, there's a little assay like a little tab that you that sucks up a little bit of blood. You put it into the machine, and it'll give you a readout. And if you do that, you know. 10 times over the course of a week, 15 times over the course of a week, meaning you do it when you wake up in the morning, you do it uh, after a couple of meals in the day or after a meal in the day, certainly after your bigger meals, after your smaller meals, you just see like just how, you, how high your blood sugar is. I mean, if once your blood sugar reaches into the 90s, it's probably less than optimal. The number of people that have a blood sugar in 90 above, even fasting, forget about after uh, meals, um, you know, is, is, is enormous. And, and it's that kind of information, I think, that really will catalyze or catapult people into, into getting action. One thing I really emphasize with the Go Cogno approach is helping people be advocates for their own care and the architect of their own actions. This idea really speaks to that. It allows you to manage your own care know what's going on in your own body and do something real that has the potential to help you have more good days than bad days. Does this sound interesting to you? If it does, I have an offer that I'd like you to take me up on. I'm looking for one person who would be willing to try to do this for a week. I mean, really commit to it. And I would help you do that. And then afterwards, I would write about it. What you did, how you did it, what you found out, what the result was. So here's my offer. If you're willing to work with me on this and monitor your blood sugar for a week and let me write about it, after the article is published, I will refund you the cost of your blood sugar monitor as a thank you for participating in this. If you're interested in this idea, even just to talk about it, email me at tonydaring at gocogno.com. I look forward to hearing from you, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, as always, be kind to your mind.